West towards Moscow, I'm in the Siberian oil city of Tumen, an administrative center for Russia's principal export product. Here, executives gather and workers produce the mechanics of the oil business. This is one of many factories serving the oil industry, making fittings, bolts and protectors for use on the oil rigs and pipelines. It's a Soviet-era business, thriving in an age of capitalist wealth. I've met some Communist Party supporters here and some who say they won't vote at all. But most say this. Yuri Dudoyev has run this plant for 26 years, seeing it through the fall of communism, the upheaval of the 90s and the oil boom years since 2000. The manufacturing industry pays high taxes that only go to pay the salaries of officials. It would be much better if our taxes were reinvested into modernization. On a snack break, with black bread and pork fat, Yuri's men seem generally satisfied, <laughs> if a little uninspired by what the future holds. He has been in charge of the country for many years. He ruled well, and he will rule well. That's my opinion. Everything will be fine. What else can we do? We have to live and raise our kids, so we'll go on working. And here's a clue to why so many believe Vladimir Putin is the only choice. I watched television yesterday and it's a real circus. The other candidates are not presidential. Putin looks stronger and more serious. State control over the mass media is much as it was in Soviet times and Russia's workers have yet to catch up with the big city middle class in turning to the internet for alternative views. They do hope for change, for higher salaries, lower prices, but there seems little desire for a change of leadership. Here at least, among the workers, Putin for president is still a safe bet. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, Tumen.